This presentation I'll be showing you how to use the Risa Tecla link. So starting out we'll jump right into a Tecla model. I've built a Tecla model here that's got all sorts of different connections. We're going to be taking the connections from our Tecla model over to Risa Connection. So to do that you assign your different connections in the structure. So let me double check here. So if you see you have an Applications and Components section here and there'll be an Engineering tab. In the Engineering tab you have ability to put all sorts of different connection types in. Beam to beam, beam to column, bracing connections. And a lot of these here are going to be sent right over to Risa Connection for design. So for example you can do a clip angle for, we'll put one, just a clip angle in our model. I've sprinkled all sorts of connections already in my model but let me just create a clip angle connection. Uh, that's what our clip angle looks like here but I'll assign it to something. So just by clicking on the column and then the beam the clip angle gets attached to that connection there, right there. So I right click to interrupt it and I can double click on that connection and define some information on that. So the sizing of the plate or how many belts, things like that, or I can just use the default settings. So I'm going to leave it as the default. One thing I need to do is place the loading in there. So the design type, if you see here, I'm going to want to put a shear load in there or if we were doing a moment connection, we would want to put the moment. The other thing you can do is use the UDL instead. So if you want to just use UDL, you can place that information directly in there. Uh, so I'm going to say OK and come out of here and you can see all the different types of connections I have. I have, if you double click on that one, I have a bolted moment uh, connection which is my flange plate connection and in here we'll notice I have a shear and a moment listed in there. Um, I've got a chevron brace listed here. I've got some diagonal braces listed on the back here. Um, all sorts of different types of connections um, and you can define another way to define that loading so the loading can be done either with the moment, the shear, or the UDL um, or you can double click on the beam itself and inside of that beam information you can find out if you want to click on that beam information you can find the beam itself information here but what we're interested in is user-defined attributes. If you click on the user-defined attributes you can go to the end conditions and define the actual moment and shear listed right here at the ends of that beam. That's another way to send the loads over to Teresa Connection. So you have a couple different options to choose from when you're sending loads over to Risa Connection. So if I zoom back out here, all the, all the connections I have in my model will be sent over. So I've sprinkled some around and let's go ahead and send them over to Risa Connection. To do that, it's in the ungrouped items. You can search for it listed under Risa here or we can type in Risa at the top and it will find those Risa connections. Um, so to design the connections, you just click on double click design connections and here's the summary of the connections that are coming across. So you'll see each connection is going to be ported across individually over Teresa Connection and then it will be grouped into different groups based on the type of connection and we'll see a whole project full of all the connections we sent across. And we see each different type of connection being sent over and then we've got Risa Connection opening up right here, giving us all the different connections. So in Risa Connection, we'll see that it's grouped by the t name of the group here. So column moment plate splice, we see column to beam clip angles, we scroll down a little bit, we see column beam direct mo uh, moments welded here, extended end plates, flange plates, we've got uh, some different types of tube connections with a shear tab, a, flan a flush plate end plates, tube to tube, uh, chevrons, and some diagonal braces. And on the right side, each type of this group is listed there with the name of the connection listed below it in each the number identifying each connection in Tecla. Um, so we first before we get started in here what we do is we say click solve the project which is going to solve all the loading that went through the entire project and it's going to give us a pass or a fail. And you can see if you click on that 
group, you get individual telling us pass or fail with a little green checkbox and a pass listed. So for these, we've got passing going on all of them. They all look good. And then we scroll down and we see this group and they all are passing. One thing we're noticing is that the passing is pretty low. So perhaps this is oversized. Uh, so we can make some decisions about what we want to do in this connection? Do we want to go ahead and size them differently? Uh, for example, if we look at this connection by itself, let's double click on it. What we can do to look at this connection, we can see it in three dimensions. We can click on it in two dimensions and see the information in two dimensions from the side or from the front. Uh, and then we can look at the report. And this is going to be all of our engineering calculations. So scrolling down, I can see that they're really, really lowly lo loaded. So what I might do is go ahead and change this connection. So to change it, I can do things like just click on the number of bolts. So if I click on a bolt, it will change the connection from five bolts. We can say maybe let's go down to uh, how about three bolts? And we can see, uh, does that work? And we can solve one connection at a time, and we see that it fails. So why is it failing? It's got an under one code check, so that should be telling us it's passing, and if we go to the reports, it tells us it's giving us an erection stability problem. So not only is the program checking things like the uh, engineering calculations, it's also checking whether it will be passing there for the, uh, the stability of the check. So what we do is we go back over to two dimensions or three dimensions, dimensions and we can figure out to maybe bump this up to four bolts. Now we're doing this on an individual connection to check it. Now it passes. Uh, what we can do also is say, hey, let's just change this entire group. Let's make every single connection here. It looks like we're actually, I think we're all at four, but we can double check that uh, by just taking a look at the bolts. In, with the highlighting of the group, we can see everything is set to four currently. So we're all set. So every connection in this group is now four bolts. If we wanted to try changing this all, for example, to five, for some reason, it, we need to increase it. We can change it as a group and then solve that group and check everything out there. So we have the ability to change a connection individually or as a group. As I scroll down, I can see the other types of connections we have. So we're going into the weak axis, this one right here. We're passing just fine. If we go down below that, we've got some different bolted connections with, uh, we've got dog bone connections, we've got some end extended end plate connections that are all passing just fine. It looks like I have some failures in here, so I have one connection in this group that's p failing. So let's take a look at that one. This is this one connection, and we see that this is going to have stiffeners on it. Let's see why it's failing. So if we go over to the reports, it tells us some passing and failing. And what I usually do is I go to the worst case failure, which is 1.2. It's listed on this one right here, and I find out what's going on here. So our vertical plate block shear is the failure mechanism for this one. So what we can do is we can go ahead and maybe change that vertical plate. Um, if it's going to be maybe right now it's a quarter inch, we can try increasing this. Let's go to maybe half an inch and see if that helps this connection and now it passes. So we can kind of move on from there. Now anything you do in the program, so we see anything you do in the Risa Connection program, all is going to go over to Tecla, once we've updated the sizes or made any changes in here, it's automatically going to be sent backwards for us. So you can see different things you can do to adjust all the different pieces. And we'll just scan through these real quick just to see the types of connections we have. But I just I want to get back to our Tecla model. So what we'll do is we'll save all the model here. It looks like we are a little deep there. So probably we'd want to look around and see maybe different information. We've got some failures in here, but uh, what we'll do is we'll let we'll keep going from there. So let's go ahead and save this model and we'll go ahead and say file. And the way to export it back is just say file export to Tecla. And you click on that, it's going to send all of this information, including all the code check information and the sizes and the number of bolts and any weld information, anything we've adjusted is all going to go backwards to Tecla. So back to the Tecla model, we can see here we've got a list of all the different connections. It shows that whether they passed or failed, it gives you the connection type listed right there, the number and the type after it. And we can see it whether all the information that went back and forth. So we can then go back into our model and we would be able to make changes. We can it automatically, everything's been adjusted for us. So we shouldn't need to make any changes to that. Anything you want to do at this point, you can update the connections, you can update the model, and then you can send it back to Risa Connection and it can be a round trip. That Risa Connection model lives on its own, so you could send that off to somebody or you can keep it with the Tecla model. It's up to you. Thank you for watching today's video.